안녕하십니까? 대구 스마트 치과의 박우연 원장입니다. Greetings. I'm Dr. Park w o n of Daegu Smart Dental Clinic. Today's online master course is about available bone and bone tissue quality evaluation. Let's look at the contents. First is available bone and bone mass. Second, bone tissue quality. Third, primary stability, which is reliant on a bone tissue quality and available bone. Fourth, I'm going to talk about using porcine bone to understand a little bit better. First, it's about available bone. We can look at this in three different perspectives. First, with height and length. Clinical model analysis, panorama, CT. These are the ways we use to evaluate bone available. We primarily use CT these days. Using CT, we can evaluate available bone. Let's look at width first. This is very important because there is minimum buccal lingual distance required for implant placement. Depending on where the treatment is required, the minimum amount of bone necessary may vary. This is a directly related to long-term stability. Let me write this. Therefore, width evaluation is important. Let's look at CT. You can do visual inspection. You can see where there is lack of bone. You can do bone graft. Other methods include using devices and doing visual inspection. Also, I would like to talk about bone height. You can evaluate using panoramic image or CT. Panoramic image is about 25% expanded image, and CT is almost the same as the exact thing. Finally, about bone length, you can do model analysis or do visual inspection. In the case of insufficient bone, we need to look at the width and height. At times, a patient can be lacking in one aspect, or both height and width may be an issue. As for short implant, when there's lack of height, it can be used, and when width is lacking, you can use mini implant. We can use these methods to solve lack of available bone. Methods include ridge augmentation, sinus bone graft, socket preservation, ridge splitting, or nerve repositioning. Various methods can be used to overcome insufficient bone. These will be addressed in depth in a lecture on surgery. Second is bone tissue quality. This is the hardness of bone. We cannot classify it clear cut, but it can be largely divided into three: soft bone, normal bone, and hard bone. Depending on the site, in the case of lower anterior area, it's quite hard. In the case of lower posterior, there's tendency of soft bone. Yes, it may vary depending on patients. As I was preparing this lecture, I've highlighted this in red. You can evaluate the bone quality using CT panorama or PA image. Clinically, what is most important is the tactile resistance you get at initial drilling. This is very important in evaluating bone quality. I think this is crucial. In order to 
really understand this, so we do hands-on practice with porcine bone. So I want to emphasize this point. On CT, you can see there's a lot of cancellous bone here, and there's a lot of cortical bone here. You can see the density is different. You can evaluate this using CT. Depending on bone quality, we need to drill differently. Depending on normal, soft, or hard bone, drilling should differ. If depending on bone tissue quality, over drilling or under drilling may be required. This is something that clinicians should understand fully. In general, what is recommended is referred to as nominal drill. In normal bone, the manufacturers set the dimension and depending on whether it is harder or weaker, you need to adjust the drilling. This is something that is most important in basic course. In the same context, if we are to place a 5.0 by 10 millimeter, perhaps depending on bone quality, we need to do under drilling or over drilling. In soft bone, we need to do under drilling, and in hard bone, over drilling is done. And this is for getting good primary stability. Depending on different classification in soft bone, we need to do under drilling and during drilling, if primary stability is insufficient, you can use an open wrench when placing a pre-mount implant. Also, no mount implant is recommended so that we can prevent implant from rotating when the wrench is removed. In normal bone, you can use nominal drill. If you use the same diameter drill, then everything will go smoothly. I think hard bone is most important. Personally, when I do surgery, I prefer soft bone over hard bone. In hard bone, there are many precautions that, that we need to take. In principle, we need to use a drill size that is one size bigger. Because the bone is hard, overheating can occur, and this is a problem. We need to use a sharp drill, and you need to use irrigation sufficiently to cool it. If you drill too much in the socket, then it can cause bone heating, so we need to be very, very careful. When placing an implant, we need to adjust the implant height. If you adjust it excessively in hard bone, then pressure necrosis can occur. Therefore, you need to be aware that there is increased risk of pressure necrosis when installing two or more threads with infinite torque. When adjusting placement depths, place approximately 1 mm below the bone level only. There are many precautions in doing implant placement in hard bone. Third, implant primary stability. This is very important in basic course. How do we get primary stability? What is primary stability? In order to get good primary stability, we need to look at bone amount and bone quality. How do we get primary stability? That is the key. We need to adjust the bone interference. When you do drilling, you need to evaluate the bone quality with the tactile sense you get with drilling. Patient's bone amount cannot be changed, so we need to evaluate the bone quality and accordingly adjust the bone interference. I think this is most important in basic course. We need to get about 20 to 40 Newton centimeter of primary stability. If you adjust 
even more. This is slightly off the extent of basic course, but these days we do a lot of immediate loading. In those cases, we need to get 50 Newton centimeters of primary stability. If you go over that, that may be excessive, but in the end, you need to adjust the bone interference level. That is most important. Bone interference is shown in red. How much of it are you going to adjust? Are you going to use nominal drill or are you going to use a drill one size smaller or one size bigger? Depending on bone quality, you can adjust the bone interference. If you look over here, we cannot control bone quality and what we can control is the bone interference. We need to do this to get the desired primary stability. The amount of bone interference leads to the amount of primary stability. By adjusting bone interference, we can get a good primary stability. That is the goal. How much of a bone interference would increase if we increase the diameter or length of an implant? If you increase the diameter, the amount of bone interference increases more. In order to get better primary stability, it is more favorable to increase diameter than length. Let me summarize. Depending on soft, normal, and hard bone, we need to come up with a strategy how you're going to drill. In soft bone, you need to do under drilling, and in the case of hard bone, you need to do over drilling. With bone compaction, you can get to primary stability in the case of soft bone. In the case of normal bone, you can use nominal drill to get the primary stability that we want. In the case of hard bone, you need to use a drill a size bigger in order to prevent pressure necrosis. You need to remove sufficient amount of cortical bone to get appropriate amount of primary stability. Please remember the precautions that I've mentioned earlier. We're going to do hands-on practice using porcine bone repeatedly in this image. There's cortical and cancellous of bone. As for the porcine bone, the thickness of cortical bone differ depending on the region. Therefore, it's of great help in learning about the tactile senses you get when drilling on different bony tissues. With experience, you'll be able to learn whether you need to do under drilling or over drilling. About 20 to 40 Newton centimeters of primary stability should be achieved, and this is deemed appropriate. You need to continue on practicing on thick and thin cortical bone. You need to do continuous hands-on practice to really get the idea. Drilling and implant placement. There are these RPM and torque values. The reason why I included this contents is because there are many problems associated with this. Dentists who are beginners, you need to take note of RPM. You need to apply appropriate amount of torque so that you don't make mistakes when placing implants. I would like to emphasize these two. I was not able to go into as much of a detail as I would have liked due to time constraint. If we meet offline, we'd be able to do a lot of hands-on practice. In evaluating bone quality and assessing available bone, the most important is how to get primary stability. We were able to learn about this today. I hope we can meet offline to get more detail. And through hands-on practice, I hope you'll be able to master what was discussed today. Thank you for watching.